What's the word, y'all? After watching Gobert get outplayed by a rookie center on a two-way contract, the Timberwolves have asked themselves if the Gobert they got in the trade with the Jazz is a shadow of the player who was such a force in his years in Utah. Whoa. Today's supposed to be an off day. I ain't planning on making no videos. I want to chill, relax, and then this, this hit the timeline. And I'm here to talk about it because I didn't watch this game live, Miami Heat versus the Minnesota Timberwolves, because in my mind, this is a layup for the Wolves. Of course, they're missing Carthony Towns. They were also missing Cal Anderson and some rotational players. But but the but the Heat were missing Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. That should be a win in a lot of cases. So I didn't watch this game. But after it wrapped up, I got so many tweets. Kenny, you got to go watch your boy. You've been a Rudy Gobert backer for as long as you've been in the league. You got to go watch your boy because this is bad. So you know what I did last night? I watched those minutes. And I, I, I watched specifically the Rudy Gobert minutes. And I'm disappointed. And so to see this tweet come out, this is a perfect time to start talking about all things Rudy Gobert because it's what? 30 plus games into this experiment. And things are ugly. Now, I made a video on November 29th, 2022, where I, it was a 14-minute video. Actually, I can just show you. The video's right here. November 29th, as you can see, zero views, zero comments, unlisted, and the name of it is Kenny Timberwolves. Now, that wasn't going to be the name of the video, but in this video, I spent 13 minutes and 14 seconds just talking about how disappointed I was in Minnesota Timberwolves. I went over some film and stuff like that. The reason I didn't publish this video is because it was the same day that Carthony Towns got injured and it felt like it was just adding insult to in injury, literally, why I didn't want to talk bad about the organization while they were missing their guy. And as you notice, if you go through every video on this channel, I've very rarely talked about the Minnesota Timberwolves because it's been impossible for me to kind of gauge the stuff that's going on. But yesterday, when I went through and watched these minutes, I think it's time. It is time. Because whether Carnley Towns is on the floor or if he's not on the floor, one thing should have been consistent this season, and that is Rudy Gobert playing good defense. Now, this has also got a lot of people to come out the woods and say, oh, he's been tricking y'all for years and years and years. I don't believe that is the case. When I watch this version of Rudy Gobert, it is dramatically different than the version that we got in the regular season in the years that he won Defensive Player of the Year. Once we get to the postseason, I know everybody got their own different opinions about Rudy Gobert, whatever. But I mean, when it comes to, to doing the things to win basketball games in the regular season, Rudy Gobert was king on the defensive side of the ball. And so far this season, it has fallen off. And I want to show you some of the moments. Because, because Orlando, or not Orlando Johnson, Orlando Robinson legitimately made Rudy Gobert look bad. So bad that the last five and a half minutes in a close game, Chris Finch said, hey, we gave up five first round picks, 17 rotational players, and we don't want to play him in the last minutes because he has become a liability. What? If, if you've never watched the basketball game, had no history, and I put this game on and said one of these players is a max player and one of them is a G leaguer, you would have thought Rudy Gobert is a G leaguer, legitimately. So shout out to Orlando because he looked amazing last night. And remember, I'm the guy that has defended Rudy Gobert for the entirety of his career, but I'm not a jackass. I'm going to call a spade a spade. And so far this season, 27 has not been the 27 that we've seen over previous seasons. And we go dive into that in a second. Um, so here's one of the plays where Orlando Johnson just... I think a lot of what Orlando Johnson was doing was a lot of heart and hustle. Rudy Gobert stone hands, maybe got hit in the face, whatever. Uh, a rebound for Orlando. Drop coverage from Rudy Gobert, tries to get contest. I don't see this as a Rudy Gobert thing because he's there for the contest and causes the miss. This is Anthony Edwards got to get down into the, to the nitty gritty and box number 25 out. And you can even see Rudy Gobert look at Anthony Edwards. And one thing I will say, the entirety of the season for Rudy Gobert and the Minnesota Timberwolves, body language has been terrible. And that's one of the things I mentioned in November 29th in that video, where anytime there's a defensive lapse, whether it be from Rudy, whether it be from, from Ant, from Austin River, whoever the hell is on the court, everybody is like, what the hell? Like the body language is crazy. They always pointing at the next guy. Oh, you supposed to do this. You supposed to, it's been two and a half months. I know every basketball's evolving and we always learning, but bro. We got to get snappy with it, bro. It's, it's not like we got an entire season to figure it out. Rudy Gobert's always been a good rebounder. So far this season, the, the Minnesota Timberwolves can't rebound a damn thing. What a poor box out attempt from Rudy Gobert. And even Austin Rivers, I mentioned body language. I didn't even realize that when I first watched this clip. Even Austin Rivers is pissed off at Rudy Gobert allowing this two-way rookie to out-hustle him and out-heart him for offensive board in a close game. And right here, this is one of the last clips we'll see of, of Rudy Gobert. Because like I mentioned, he was played off the court for the last five or so minutes. Shout out to Orlando. He was a dog last night. Like I mentioned, there are a lot of people coming out the woodwork and said, hey, he's been like this in tight career. This is just who he is. And, and I don't see that as the case. I think think that there legitimately has been regression here 
And you can argue that regression is starting at a 30 year old center who uses his uh, athleticism and things like that to be effective. I can see that. But, but overall, I'm just extremely disappointed. I want people to remember that at the height of Rudy Gobert, like two seasons ago, thinking basketball was dropping videos, does Rudy Gobert defense make him a superstar? The answer to that was no, even in the moment. But that's just how impactful he was defensively. And you want to know the crazy part about Rudy Gobert's defense this season? His rim deterrence is as good this season as any other season of his career. When he is on the court, people don't go to the rim. I know everybody can say they're not afraid of him. Even, even Anthony Edwards, his own teammate, before they traded for him, said, hey, I, I got no fear in this man. It's apparent that there's at least a little bit of hesitancy when Rudy Gobert is under the basket to go at him. I know we had the series. Again, we could talk playoffs all we want. I'm not even talking playoff success or nothing. I'm legitimately talking about the regular season because once we get to the playoffs, it's a whole different monster. But, like, I thought that there was going to be a world where, like, they saw Terrence Mann hit a million three-pointers uh, in that one series against the Clippers, and then occasionally we saw Reggie Jackson going to the chest of Rudy Gobert. And then the year after that, Maxi Kleber hit a million three-point shots in their series. And then Jalen Brunson, damn, they got a max contract after dogging them boys that a lot of people see Rudy Gobert and still just, just test him, test him, test him. They still don't. They still don't test him. But one thing that this is, again, just me just spitballing, one thing that has been consistent in Rudy Gobert's career is the drop coverage. It always has been a thing because his job is to protect the rim. Uh, teams are just shooting. They're, ju they're just shooting, and they're hitting shots. A crazy stat that I just looked into, um, ridiculous. When Rudy Gobert is on the floor, the opposing team's accuracy in the mid-range area is in the 1 percentile. Oh, I'm sorry. For the team, it's in the 99 percentile. It means that when Rudy Gobert is on the court, teams are shooting 10% better from the mid-range area. That sounds like some fake ass numbers, but it's a fact. And Rudy being the drop coverage big, there's not a lot of contests on those mid-range. There's not a lot of contests on those three-point shots. And in Utah, they kind of lived by like, hey, we're going to allow you to shoot the threes on the pick and roll, and we're just going to assume that you're going to miss because it's hard to shoot off the dribble. Now it's the mid-range. It's a little bit easier to hit that shot. So I, I'm extremely disappointed by the play of Rudy Gobert. And, and I know that Minnesota Timbers fans feel the exact same way. We're like, we gave up all of this and he's not performing nearly as good as we want. But I also still want to give them the benefit of the doubt in, in a way. Uh, mostly because this hasn't even been 45 games or so. We haven't even got halfway through the season with this experiment. And, and about a month of it is without the other player. And I know you it wasn't good with the, with the other player, Carlton Towns. But still, it's just a weird-ass situation. Oh, it's weird to look at these stats to see that he's given up a bunch of offensive rebounds. And I test say that. We just saw a bunch of clips of Orlando getting a bunch of boards on him. So, anyway, quick hitter. Uh, Rudy Gobert, be better. Simple. <laughs> is that crazy? Be better. Be better. All right.